What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little passes at this is a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. I'm James. We're married. We like to get scared together. So I was looking at all of the movies we've covered over the past couple of months at this point mm-hmm. on the podcast, and they're all too good. Like, I'm sick of talking about movies that are good because <laughs> we spend so much time talking about, oh, the cultural context of films and, oh, interesting historical trivia and maybe, ooh, some trivia about the filmmaking process. No, I want to talk about garbage. I want to talk about a movie that fucking sucks <laughs> and that there's next to no behind the scenes anything about. It, it doesn't seem like it made any impression on pop culture. It just kind of exists. And somehow, neither of us had seen it until last night. We're talking about fear.com. Dot com. Yeah. Fear.com.com is uh, awful. Yeah. It has a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes. If you recall the cinema score game, fear.com earned an f yes you know i bet that's why that was yeah in our brains because yeah, yeah. we started watching it and we're like hey why did we pick this it is one of only i think like 23 movies to ever get an f and a lot of those are like did not have the 40 million dollar budget that this did yeah and some respected actors in this steven dorf Stephen Dorff, uh, Natasha McKelleny? I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Udo Kier, although Udo, Udo, Kier. Udo he's, Kier's in he's some a glorified cameo. kind of genre stuff. Yeah, he dies real quick in the beginning of this. But uh, Fear.com, 2002. And if you're about our age and have memories of going to the video store growing up, the cover of this movie scared the it's shit out cover. of me yeah. as a child. And nothing in the movie is as scary as that no, cover. No, no, It almost looks like Blade. It kind of does. If you put a little hat on it, yeah, it does kind of look like Puppet Master Blade. Uh huh. Uh, Udo Kier, uh, Puppet Master Littlest Rice. Oh yeah, the the awful one. Yeah. Yep, that's Uh, the connection there. Yeah, Fear dot com. Um, boy, is this bad. It's really horrendous. Uh, it's it's got that. It's based around a website and the internet, but it was made in two thousand two by people who maybe didn't have the internet. Yeah. Judging by uh, how they depict it. Interesting. The director, William Malone, Michigan's own. He's from Lansing. Oh, I thought it was, uh, he's from Lansing? Lansing, yeah. Okay. He did House on Haunted Hill, which. Prior to this. Yes, Which that's 99. Is, is not a great movie, but it's fun. It's fun in the style works more so for what I think he likes to do, because that's the remake of a Vincent Price mm-hmm. movie. Also has Jeffrey Combs. Or, Jeffrey Combs is a, in this. It's a William Castle movie, rather. And it that's got some kind of fun, stylized sequences. You see some of that in this, too. I think if he hasn't directed music videos, that feels like a waste of his talent. Oh, do you... Coyotes, yeah. Wow, I thought your phone was playing something. Mm-hmm. Those coyotes. Those coyotes outside. We get coyotes in our neighborhood, and sometimes they're honestly scary sounding. They, yeah. it's weird how like we're obviously very safe in our house, but <laughs> it is that weird, just like thousands of years old primal kind of fear that there's predators outside. There are, and they are being loud right they're now. They're loud. Holy shit. I doubt the microphones are picking them no. up, but it is eerie. Um, Jeez, hope they didn't get a anyone's pet. Yeah, that, that, that's the actual scary part of living by coyotes. You got to make sure your pets are safe. So fear.com uh, is a blend, a half blend of ideas. So many of them. It feels very Seven-esque. Yeah. It, and, it, and The Ring, but this came out uh, two months before The American Ring. So it still could have taken it could have been inspired inspiration by, by the original Ring. Yeah. Right. Which also had sequels and everything. So yeah. it was known. Because yeah. it, it, you go to this website, you die in 48 hours. Yeah. Fear.com. Dot com. Yes. It is fear, the words fear, D-O-T-C-O-M, and then period C-O-M. Right. It's fear.com.com dot com is the website. Even in the movie, not just the marketing website, which no longer exists, but in the movie, they are typing in fear.com.com. Dot com. The f- I just am thinking of how that would have happened because- 
when I've worked in art departments before, one of my jobs, which they would give to the intern because no one else wanted to do it, is if there were um, URLs that appeared in the movie on a on a computer or someone's screen, they'd give me a list and like, here, make sure that these don't exist already and like just keep a list of like which ones do or which ones we can buy the domains of. And I mm. wonder, did they just get I don't think they could so far into this and realize, oh shit. Fear.com was probably already purchased and they couldn't get it. Yeah. They're probably being like, you know, being charged a ton if they want it. Like, oh, you want this for your movie called Fear.com? Give me two million dollars. And they're like Fear.com.com it is. Because we were talking about this movie with a friend and they said, yeah, it's really stupid that the website's fear.com.com. And I thought that they meant In real the life. kind of marketing website you could maybe go to. Was fear. And I'm like, that kind of makes sense because the name of the movie is fear.com. I guess fear.com. But no, in the movie, it is fear.com.com. The characters are typing in fear.com.com. And so that... I think should tell you a lot about what we're dealing with here. <laughs> I think that does enough to tell you the caliber of this film. Oh, I love it. It's trash. I mean, it is. It's The problem is it's not that entertaining of trash. No, it's kind of slow paced. It's slow paced and boring. It's very procedural. It's, it's yeah, a lot of cops. Steven Dorff is a cop. His uh, He's teaming up with a health inspector and they're trying Terry to. Terry Houston, Department of Health. Actually, Terry Houston Department. Of Actually, Health. Terry Houston. In their first scene together, he's like, like looking at something at the crime scene. Say, she like Jesus comes up behind Christ. him, and he's like, "Oh, Jesus Christ!" And she's like, "Actually, Actually Terry, Terry Houston, Houston Department." And of we Health. couldn't stop saying it. Yeah. I wouldn't touch her just yet. Jesus. Actually, Terry Houston, Department of Health. Her name's not Jesus Christ. It's actually Terry Houston. It's actually. She, if you recognize her, which I certainly did, she's from The Truman Show. That's what I think of her from. She's the woman watching him from afar, not uh, um, Laura Linney, the other lady that he ends up with. And I'm assuming they go to Fiji together oh. after he escapes. Okay. Spoilers. After he walks up the stairs through the sky and I cry. I love <laughs> I love the Truman Show. It's great. Um, yeah, she's trying her best with this script. Oh, she's not good in it. On the Wikipedia, the director, there is a quote from him where he even says he thinks she was miscast. I, I agree Because with this character... And I, it is true. This her, the character she's playing should maybe feel a bit greener. Yeah, like a she's a younger cop who is trying to impress everyone. I think that's what he says. Uh -huh. is, but Natasha, the, this actress, she she she's kind of in the Meryl Streep genre of woman where she's got very high cheekbones. Yes, is very stately. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be intimidated poised, by her. Yes. It's not quite. But she's playing this, this character. awkward character who like. Oh, sorry, I don't go outside a lot. Here's a random bug uh, fact. I yeah, can you want yeah, press uh reply yes to learn more about bug facts through my text series bug facts. Like she's bugfacts.com. She's got kind of a bug hyper fixation. Uh -huh. And I think that's fun. She's like the uh scientist in was it alligator? There's the Oh yeah. That's an interesting I can only think of two examples of it, so I don't know if it's a trope, but I like the idea of like hot lady scientists who maybe they don't know they're hot and they have a hyper fixation on something weird and kind of gross hmm. like reptiles or bugs. Yeah. So it's, it's seven, it's the ring and it's kind of got some changeling elements to it. We were debating this because right away there is the, uh, someone getting scared by a bouncing ball that comes out of nowhere. It's like a white kind of dodgeball-sized ball. Like ball, dodge ball, yeah. ball. So, and it's not going down the stairs. So no. I'm saying it's not changeling. Yeah. So we were debating at what point does that stop being a changeling reference? I think we think the ball's got to be red yes. and going down a flight of stairs yes. to be a true reference to the changeling. Yeah, agreed. The little kid looks... Uh, very village of the damned. Yeah, like if uh, Carol Ann from Poltergeist was possessed. Very by a spirit. yes, very blonde. Yeah, blindingly blonde. Yeah. Um, that's a ghost child who's in this movie. Mm -hmm. There's also a guy torturing a woman on a live stream. A lot of elements coming into play. You got yeah, you got the website. You've got the woman on the website who's like, "Do you want to play? Do you want to find? Come find me. Come find me. You're 48 hours. I know you like to watch. I know you like to watch. Uh, so and she is the little girl. Maybe. No, I don't. That I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's kind of incomprehensible. It, it This movie is very, it feels like maybe there's a scene or two missing. At a certain point, 
I wrote in my notes that if someone else online does not have a written summary of this, this this podcast episode might be a little fucked. And I think we might be a little fucked. I looked for detailed summaries. And um, it turns out I couldn't find any. everyone else on Reddit was just as confused as we were. And so was Roger Ebert. If Roger Ebert can't tell me what's going on in this, then I don't really think anyone can. Roger Ebert kind of liked this movie, though, which is interesting. I know. He spoke some. He was like, it's scary. He it's said like, no, it's, it's not. He's Roger. like, it's nonsense, but it looks cool. And it doesn't. And it I, maybe it did it in 2002. It does the, the stupid just like, oh, in lieu of actually creepy imagery, we're going to have quick flashes. We're going to have the warped wide angle oh, lens where you're like distorted like really smushed focus and the image gets like stretched out and it's kind of everything's dark there's flashing lights everywhere there's like the negative imagery and that's like what they just do instead of having actually creepy things there are a bunch of little montages where you see glimpses of things and you're like oh what was that a like i don't know ghost woman in the hallway but Everyone's apartment in this looks like they live in the Smaller. version of Detroit from The Crow. <laughs> yeah. It's all just very kind of moist looking lofts with not a lot of furniture in them. <laughs> it's no good. Like nothing about uh, this movie is fun at all. And then it's it's R. There's a lot of titties in it, which I wasn't titties. expecting. Yeah. They're I don't know there. what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting to see so many boobs. Uh huh. Um, I guess if it's oh, it's the internet, and the internet, there's you can find snuff videos and boobs. <laughs> you can find boobs on the internet. I've I've heard. Yeah. I don't want to personally, you know. Uh, yeah. I don't want to. Uh, I've heard. Yeah. I've I personally, personally I've never seen any, but I, yeah. My friends. I don't want to incriminate myself. My friends myself. told me that you can find them. That that's what some people have said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but at the same time, it's not scary. Like I said, uh, the gore could be better. Um, yeah, which is cause interesting because like, in Roger Ebert's review, he said this is one of the goriest movies I've ever seen, and I, he is he was kind of a prude. Uh, and also, the seven is gorier than this. I don't think seven's gorier than this. Seven's got some extreme imagery to it, but it's all after the fact and Still, implied. Maybe. I I mean, Seven's the better version of this Well, movie. yes, Seven's <laughs> better than Hot Take. Dude, you you heard it here first. Seven is better than Fear.com. Listen, I like to be a maverick sometimes. I like to state my own opinion. I don't like to be put in a box <laughs> by what other people think. So yeah, I just think... you don't like to be put in, in a box? <laughs> What's in the box? Not my movie opinions. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, uh, I one thing I do like about this movie is I love the design of the website itself. I love fear.com.com. Oh, it's, so, it's awful. It's, it's so like bad. A, no, but it makes me feel nostalgic. It's kind of like an old shockwave game or like a flash game. Kind of. I don't think websites ever actually looked like this. But like, did you ever play? Do you remember uh, on nick.com, the little games on there? No. I feel like some of those kind of looked like that i don't know all right maybe i like it my my only two points of compliment for this movie is there is a single scene where the villain played by steven ria ray uh, is an irish actor where i thought he was creepy he is creepy yeah Yeah. Uh, but a single scene where it's like done effectively and then at one point they're walking around like uh, a factory and i liked that setting all right i guess we can Oh, spoiler alert for fear.com. Here it comes. We're going to talk about it. You can't spoil this because neither of us know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, we're going to do our best to spoil it, but... uh, All right, we start off... spoils itself. We got Udo Kier in a subway station, which I feel like he just looks like he should be in this scene. You know, this kind kind of dark, like, gothic lighting. It's almost like a noir he's i think he's got a hat you know who, who's this mysterious guy in this empty subway station and oh no there's a bouncing ball and a creepy little girl yeah so and this little girl scared him she's playing on the train tracks and he uh does the the right thing and <laughs> and tries to go after this little girl to get her off 
the train tracks, but uh uh-oh, his glasses, he drops his glasses, and he can't see without his glasses. And also, the little girl isn't really there, so. Yeah, the little girl's also fake. So now he's just down there on the the subway tracks, a train is coming, he gets against the wall. Yeah, he finds, you know, maybe he could make it. It seems like he'll be fine against the wall, but as the train draws closer, he, like, has an intrusive thought or something, he's like, wait, I think I can make make it. it. And then, like, runs to try to get out, and then he gets hit and goes flying against the wall. But then he it like this train hits him like full he speed. He goes flying. He goes flying, but I expected like a splat. But no, he just gets like like thrown through the air, hits the wall, and then he's just bleeding from the mouth. And then his eyes get all weird. Yeah, his eyes are all like his pupils are all huge and stuff. And because that's the other thing, when they find him, they're like this corpse looks all terrified. Which yeah, his is, face, again, his like mouth is open. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, what the fuck happened to him? Why is he, why does he look so scary? Yeah. Or why does he look so scared? Yeah. They also on his body find this book about the internet that he apparently co-wrote with some other guy. It's called Secret Soul of the Internet. Yeah. I'm sure that book is cool. Like a 2000s <laughs> book about, about the, the internet. internet. Yeah. And like occult theories about the internet. So this, it, it, it is not Tim Berners-Lee who was killed. His name is Polidori. Yes. Polidori. Polidori. And the best part is later in the movie, no one can agree on how to pronounce. We'll get to it. Polidori. We'll get to it. And no one seemed to care. <laughs> <laughs> this is when we see the first bit of the creepy flash website that is fear.com. Which is like, they go to it and then I don't know what I'm looking at here, but the website, it almost looks as if you're choosing one of four cursors to use on the website like it's just it looks so dumb yeah and then like little what scalpels pop up and like a little field i think of scalpels. It's, if you're watching it you're you're all like voting on the the tools that are used it also says subscribers like you go on the website and it says subscribers and that goes from like zero and runs up to whatever so i'm like Okay, every it, time they go to the website, so I don't think it's subs- I think it's viewers. It's live viewers. I don't think there was anything to subscribe to back then except for like newsletters. <laughs> there weren't like YouTube channels. Right. So I think it's viewers that are going up each time. Yeah. But it's just more like they're not subscribers. They're not subscribing to anything. They're just watching you. Yeah. This is dumb. Yeah. These people don't no, know. They, they don't know. Yeah. They're not going on the internet. I feel like if... if you're doing real kind of 2000s. It would be visitors, you know? Yeah. They're, they're, they've got a web ring at the bottom. Yeah, they should be part of a web ring. Yeah. And, you Go know, like a, little, a, black sheet. a little gif of a guy sweeping and it's like under construction. construction. Yeah, and that page is never built. No. They mm. never get around to it. Oh, uh, hey, guess who else is in this movie? Jeffrey Combs. Reanimator Zone. Yeah. Which we watched after this movie as we a We did watch. Cleanser reanimator just to watch a good movie yeah because we watched this with our buddy greg who's great and um he had he had already seen this and somehow sat through it again we convinced to watch, him it, with to watch us. it again with us and then it ended and i was like can i show you like a good movie though and so yeah it was yeah. late but we watched reanimator and it was great and it's great as always yeah, fucking rule still <laughs> jeffrey combs works with steven dorf our main character and it sounds like steven dorf get has gotten letters from this guy he calls the doctor Mm -hmm. so they know that the doctor is a serial killer i guess he's killing people but he's eluding them yeah uh do they know that he's connected to fear.com.com at this point no but he did i believe live stream kills i don't he's not live streaming the kills on fear.com.com he's not i don't think so i think they're separate websites because fear.com.com was made by the ghost girl right because she's like you have 48 hours to find me wait i thought that i was, thought so too I thought until that was this, like the opening splash until this page. very fucking moment when we were having this discussion right here in real time i i'm coming to the realization i think he is live streaming on a different on a, site. I could have sworn that she haunts the website he no, live streams no, on. No, that wouldn't make sense because then all his viewers would get haunted by, That's it would right, cut down yeah. on his subscribers. His subscriber base, he'd be like, what is, what's going on? So I, I just have realized Fear. that the com. site that he's, is he's, different. Yeah, because fear.com.com you go to and it's... <laughs> So then what do they Because you go to, to it and you, get the, you, see the, you see the ghost lady yeah. who's like, do you want to play a do game? Do you want to play? You yes want, or no. Yeah. And then you can type in the want, hot box. Do you want to hurt me? Yeah, and there's a little prompt in the hot And you can type box. whatever. You can be like, why are you hurting Stephen Dorff? And she'll be like... Because he's guilty. He wanted to... 
watch me die. Come find me. She does say you wanted to watch me die. So is it like just an That's extension of fear.com? That's what I'm his website, I feel like. No. What's I his website then? Maybe the doctor.com.com. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to cut it <laughs> real quick just to say every every <laughs> podcast movie review that I have been here for you guys with, I have come away with like, I want to watch that movie. They have don't. made no, me no, no, watch No, 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 no. This is batshit. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is this movie? Yeah. It's and it and trust me, we're making it sound way better than it is. I know that's the thing is talking about it is better than talking watching it. about it is way funnier than actually watching it. We did all the heavy lifting. For <laughs> we all did. You. You're welcome. Uh, so okay, <laughs> so then the only connection then is that this woman was the first victim of the the doctor on his little snuff website. I think so. So she made her own website. I think so. What? I think so. <laughs> but here's the thing is this woman, yes, was the doctor's first victim. We learn all this later. But this is like, yeah, 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 yeah. But she made fear.com.com maybe or. <laughs> she... Well, maybe he's fear.com. <laughs> and, and she's fear.com.com. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I'm a ghost. I can't do that thing that people do. We're little like hire a hitman and get that. That's a thing. That has happened before where people will like domain squat on websites or like domains that are would make you a fuck ton of money and people have died over it. It's crazy. The wow. internet's nuts. Well, we can't get deadmeat.com, but we haven't hired a hitman. No, 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 no we no, don't no, care no, that much. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, own, if you happen to own deadmeat.com, can we please have it? Because we've tried to contact you and we can't. Yeah, I think maybe you're just not checking your email. Yeah. We would like to... Offer a very fair deal. A fair deal. Don't fucking run us over the coals. Yeah. Well, now they know. Now we're in a position of weakness. We're really nice. We're not gonna That's, like. Now we're in a position of more weakness. I, I know. We're so bad at business. We're we're really bad at business. <laughs> <laughs> hey, want to talk to you about our sponsor this week, Rocket Money. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, would you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying? Perhaps you've forgotten you're subscribed to a little haunted website called fear.com.com. I didn't know the website ghost was offering subscription plans, so good for her. Anyways, if you're like me before using Rocket Money, you have no idea how much money you're wasting on services you don't even realize you were subscribed to. I'm so bad about this to the point where checking my bank statements always makes me feel a sense of dread. Our sponsor this week is here to help you with that. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Anytime I don't have to be on the phone with customer service is time I can spend surfing the haunted web looking for ghosts. Rocket Money will even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash deadmeat. That's rocketmoney.com slash deadmeat. Rocketmoney.com slash dead meat. Our next sponsor this week is Henson Shaving. If you shave any part of your body regularly, the worst feeling is ingrown hairs. They hurt, they don't look great, and they're really rough on your skin. And you should be nice to your skin. That's why you have to meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover, and now they're bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. And they 
mean precision. By using aerospace-grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. And it gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. A gunked-up razor is the worst, and that's part of what eventually leads to nicks and irritation. And maybe the best part is that this is truly a well-designed razor. No more plastic waste with detachable heads you have to toss in the garbage after a few uses. The Henson razor works with standard, dual-edged blades to give you that old-school shave with the benefits of new-school tech. I have really sensitive skin, and I have to replace my razor blades really frequently or I get major skin irritation. And that gets super expensive fast. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about $3 to $5 a year to replace the blades. They're designed to give your face a perfectly clean shave. I personally can't grow a luscious beard, so I just use Henson razors on my legs. Really nice shave, especially around that sensitive skin on the knees and ankles. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshaving.com slash deadmeat to pick the razor for you and use code deadmeat and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash dead meat and use code dead meat. And no, but okay, so this this lady who runs fear.com.com codes it and everything. Apparently, she was the first victim of the doctor, but she is also the ghost She's child, the little ghost The girl. little girl. But we see her as a ghost girl with the ball. Yeah. But I don't know why we see her as a girl. That's okay. That's where I'm also confused because yes, it is confirmed by the end. The little girl is the same ghost as in the website. We're sure. Yes, that because says they, it in the movie. Because they show her like morphing. The little girl like morphs into the the grown up into on the website. Feel dot com dot com. I think that's yeah. Okay. And but then so why? So why is it a girl as a ghost? Yeah, because I don't think he murdered her as a little girl. That's no, because then like she wouldn't have been able to grow into right. Fear. Com. And like com. he's, let's let's set there because like these are very intense allegations. I want to clear something up here. Okay, this yeah, this yeah. villain, we don't want to speak. The doctor, mm -hmm. he's a murderer. He makes snuff films. He's not a pedophile. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the guy. He murders full grown naked women. Yeah, that all age. seem like they're in their late twenties, probably. Eh, probably early 20s. Yeah. Let's not get wild. But not little kids or anything. He's not that. He's not like that corner of the internet. No. Yeah. I mean, give him time. I'm sure, yeah, once, you know, the subscriber base starts dwindling and he's like, ah, oh, fuck. Fuck, I need, need a new thing to, like, get him back. Yeah. It's yeah. like when you start, you know, you make stuff on YouTube and you're like, I've got to edit this stuff faster. Because people's attention spans are all fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I got to start exactly killing the, the kids. <laughs> you know? Sure. It all escalates. Um. <laughs> okay. So uh, at the police there's station. There's a German. There's a, ger a German man who shows he's right a, up from he's like. He's like a kid. Yeah, yeah he's maybe. He's like a teen. Yeah, he's like a late teen. Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's a clubber. I mean, he looks like he came right from Berlin's like. Uh, sprockets kind of industrial. <laughs> no, you said he looks out of a Gushers commercial. Well, that well, there it's because there's at one point a really weird like wide angle kind of shot of him, and he looks like he's about to turn to a giant fruit. Like it's it's very bizarre. Or like his dog is being like the colors, Duke. Yeah, the colors. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those commercial. Work. Yeah, yeah. So he runs in. He's he's yelling gibberish. It's not German, I don't think, but he's just screaming something. If it's German, I can't fucking understand it. Um, and then he, he dies. Yes. And then they go to his apartment and they find naked a dead girl lady. In the tub. Naked girl in the bathtub. The the shot of her is like from underneath her in the tub. So like looking up through the water surface at the cop. But then it's just like You can see her titty. boob. It's like, like, like a <laughs> prominent nipple just... Taking up a lot of the frame. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And that and was then just the first Steven, of many. I think it's Steven Dorf sticks his hand in the bathtub. I'm presuming to check her pulse, but his hand, you're like, where is it? Where's it going? <laughs> and then it, oh, no, he goes and touches her neck. So oh, just, dead person water? We're good. Yes. Ugh. What's the movie where like there was a dead body in the tub for like a long time and it like fell apart? 
Was that a movie or is that like fucked up internet stuff? I don't know. What was Tub? No, Tub Girl was. Tub Girl's a different thing. That's around the same era. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, dude. I wonder if fear.com.com, part of its web ring is Tub, Tub Girl. Tub Girl, yeah. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. Tub Girl's one of the tamer things, I think. You think so? On that, on that web ring where people are being murdered. You live. got, got Goatsy, Tub Girl, and Lemon Party. Yeah. Those yeah. are all in there. Meat Spin. Meat Spin. Don't go to these places. Do they still exist? Probably. I don't know, actually. Huh. Don't uh, go there. I know. Gressel, do you know what we're talking about at all with any of those? I know Lemon Party and Meat Spin. Well, Lemon Party, there's a 30 Rock made a fucking joke. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's mainstream. We're fine. <laughs> and Meat Spin, you know? I know. I don't know. Goatsy tub or Tub or Girl? No. Oh, I feel like Goatsy was the original. Yeah. And it's the grossest, I think. Probably. Yeah. This podcast, not for kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry Houston, Department of Health, shows up, and yep. she's like, maybe this bathtub chick has Ebola. I don't know. That's my theory at this We're point. We're talking about Ebola a little bit. Yeah, because her face is also fucked up. Yeah, so, just like Udo Kier's was. Uh, but they find a camcorder in the apartment, and... Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry. Different the camcorder. Different is, camcorder moment here. Yeah, camcorder is the villain guy yeah, in we his cut, car. Yeah, we cut to him. He's filming with a camcorder. He's the filming. Doctor. He likes blondes, I think. Mm -hmm. He's filming young ladies outside. Yeah. And this one blonde works at a movie theater. And he walks up to her and he's like, I, she's in like the ticket booth, I think. Oh, okay. I think. I, well, he has her go to a theater because he wants her to be in movies. He says she's got it. Oh. She's going to be a movie star. I feel like he approaches her and she's sitting in a ticket booth. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he walks over to this this lady and he's like, oh, hello. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not used to talking to such pretty girls. I just like, I make my little indie movies and, and I'm like, so, ooh, 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 I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> and that's how you know that he's a big time director because he's really awkward and he's, <laughs> he's doing man on the street. Like, yeah, he's like, I, you could be a movie star. Yeah. And he gives her a business card, so it's real. It's legit. And then And he tells her, Go to this theater and maybe we'll I'll put you on stage and see how you do. And so this lady goes to this theater and This place. Immediately it's a fucking haunted house in there. The lights are flickering. There's calliope music playing. Oh yeah. Come on, like The door slams shut behind her. Yes, it looks kind of like an escape room. It inside yeah like and she's like well i want to i mean hey everyone wants to be in the movies right so she gets up on stage and there's like a blinding light yeah then fucking guess what needle drop we get rammstein just rammstein just the loudest rammstein it like blows her over it's so loud <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude that train whistle from that album yeah the train knocks her down i don't know why this movie's so german it was a berlin-based company that designed the website too for them really for the, for the movie yeah oh okay I saw that yeah sure yeah uh yeah, I, I, I feel Udo like here. Yeah, what's going on? I feel like there's. St it was filmed in Luxembourg, Luxembourg and, and Montreal, Montreal. Yeah, which I noticed because they're looking at tapes of the German kid and his girlfriend who was in the tub, and it says o two o two o two, and then they like go to another clip and it says the dates are back. It, it says o three o two o two, and I was like. Oh, there was a month that passed, and then it was 0402, and then they're like, and then they die. And then later we learned the 48 hours thing. I was like, oh, wait, I, it, it was the day first. I bet this wasn't shot in the U.S. And we looked it up, and it was not. I, I think they said skills. it was supposed to be kind of a version it's supposed of to be New, in New York. York. But I kind of like the idea of, you know how Saw is like yeah, anywhere like USA? Mm -hmm. Maybe this is kind of city Tin Canada. Yeah. It's just anywhere Canada. City tuber. Yeah. Terry Houston. We cut back to Terry Houston and her. She's got a boss. She's got a boss. Mr. Who, Turnbull. Mr. Turnbull is super tweaky. He already. You can tell he. This guy's went. He, he's gone to fear.com.com. Oh, yeah. You can tell he just. He looks all fucked up. Did not use a VPN. No, he's, he's bleeding from the nose. She even makes a joke about like, oh, play. She says, oh, playing on the internet too much. Mm hmm. Cause and, he, and he's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says yes. Also, he's also chain smoking. Terry works in the Department of Health. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's just what everything was like until the indoor smoking laws were passed. In the But that would have happened by now, right? No. By 2002? Mm-mm. I thought those were like late 90s. I remember- Maybe I'm restaurants with the smoking I think you're sections. thinking of restaurants because I remember people being able to smoke inside until like at least the mid-2000s. Really? Yeah. Right? 
I think it was state to state. Oh, that's I mean, that probably it too. Laboratories of democracy. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but this guy chain smokes so hard he doesn't this, even finish him. Yeah, this guy gets in his car. His car's ashtray is filled. It is still smoldering. There's smoke coming. Smoke up coming from, from half it. smoked cigarettes. You know what? I, like what you it, just put them down. Got a new one. You know what it is? Is I wonder if it's partially yes, that is a funny character detail. But also, I wonder if that was just a cigarette from another take. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, keep going, keep going. And he lights another one. <laughs> Dude, if he's actually smoking real cigarettes for all these takes, he's going to be so nauseous. I mean, Just it could. Like fucking choking him down. I mean, like most of the time, like I know Mad Men, they all smoked herbal cigarettes. Well, that was because they filmed in California and you couldn't smoke cigarettes. But while even filming. still, that. Oh, oh yeah, they would have died. Yeah. They all would have died yeah, yeah, yeah. by then. <laughs> uh, but this guy, he, but he's like, he's. <laughs> He's, there's a shot of him taking the cigarette out of his mouth and putting it back in like seven times. And the last one, he just like he fists, fists it into yeah. his mouth. He has like a full It's a cool f- way to smoke a cigarette. Because there's between the two fingers, which is classic. Then mm-hmm. there's holding it like a joint, which is unorthodox, but sure. But then this guy holds it like in his fist. <laughs> and it's awesome. It's like he's got a fucking bottle by the neck. Yeah. And just... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. This guy's awesome. Uh, the smoke starts filling his car, and he can't get out of his car. Yeah, but then that's he doesn't die from getting hot. No, because you think he's gonna either suffocate or the car's gonna catch on fire. But nope, the car starts driving itself, and he can't control it. And then it, you know it'll sh- it'll cut to like shot outside of the car swerving, and then shot of him inside the car plate with it like very clearly just like a static background yeah, behind yeah, him. Yeah. It's oh man, and it's great because okay, so so yeah, he died from going to fear.com.com because mm. they're investigating this. This whole movie is a series of characters being told, "Do not push this giant red button." Essentially, like here's this button. If you press it, you're gonna die in two days. All you have to do to survive this horror movie is don't press the giant red button. And you know every fucking character in this just smashes that button. And we're all going to fear.com.com. People, this is one of the easiest horror movies exactly. to survive. Just the, don't go to the website. People often watch horror movies and like to put themselves in the position and be like, could I survive it? Could you survive the stranger showing up at your house? Could that's you survive, a tough one. That's a real tough one. They're there just because you're home. Yeah. Could you survive Jason, you know, coming after you or Freddie, like what would you do to stay well, yeah, awake exactly. or whatever? This, you, one, this one, just don't go to the fucking website. Don't go to fear.com. And I think you can even get away with going there and just when she's like, do you want to play? Just be like, no, no I'm good. And she'd be like, okay. But no, she'll probably be like, liar, you want to see me die? Because she calls Stephen Dorff a liar. Oh, when he, when says, he says something about not wanting to see her die. So I, I think you're, you're kind of okay. fucked once you okay. go there. So just don't. Just don't go. That's the safest way. Done. Easy. Like, this is one where if you're working in the police department, you got to be like, I think we just got to call this one a wash because we can't investigate it because by investigating it, we're all we, the whole force is going to die. So mm. I think this one, just leave it. You know, issue like a public health statement. Be like, don't go to this. And if you no, go but to then you. But then when you do that, lots of people go. Well, then that's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to the website. Just don't do it. I guess. Then it becomes like, I mean, this is too early for internet challenges, but you know it would be. Yeah, that's true. Like parties of people go and do it together. Well, then we're getting into like talk to me territory. Yeah, or Or, uh, um, is it Halloween? uh, The one where they're watching the live stream? Resurrection, Buster Rhymes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, The car crashes and he flies out the windshield and dies. I don't know if this was me saying this or if a character says this, but all I wrote, it was that damn computer. (laughs) I think that was you, hon. <laughs> I think that was... Wait, no. Nope. No. They go to Thana Brinkman's house, who is the widow of... What? I don't remember this at all. Is this the computer whiz? Denise? Denise shows up later. There's more characters to come. Uh, no, it's, I, I think they maybe talk to his widow... Turnbull's widow. Oh, you're right because she. And she's like, yes, she lives in like the most desolate apartment in this whole thing. Oh yeah. She's sitting. I swear to God, she is sitting 
in the exact chair that like Morpheus is sitting in when he's giving Neo the two pills. It's like that fireplace and the chairs and it's just this weird rickety building. Yeah, and she's like, he had been working on, always working on the computer, probably that damn that computer. That damn computer. And he said, she said that he had been seeing a little girl. We, we get to see little snippets of the killer, the doctor. Snippets? He snips her bra right well, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, he's snipping off lots of bras and... You and know. then she's got a belt around her boobs for the rest of the Yeah, day. we do. He does put like a tastefully placed belt to keep her strapped to this table and it covers your boobs. So I guess that's nice of him. Um, in the end, it uh, gets unbelted and she's back to being topless. Like, yeah. It's like it's like the rescue moment. It's like, you're still topless. In my favorite <laughs> exit of a character from a home, not death, but just how a character <laughs> leaves a film, this girl... Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, when she like unstraps she, herself and then just kind of disappears. She walks out of this film never to be mentioned again. She survives. It's exciting. She um, does. Yeah. Theater lady does survive. Yeah. And I wonder she, if she'll go to any more auditions. She moseys right on out of there. But he, so this is, I think this is the scene. Yeah. This is the scene that's like actually kind of creepy. It's oh, him, do tell. <laughs> it's, it's him like taunting her for all his subscribers. Oh, sure. Yeah. And he's, you know, she begs, don't kill me. And he goes, well, of course I'm going to kill you. Of course you. I'm going to kill you. And like, he's. He's creepy. He's creepy. He's the delivery's yeah. good. It's, uh. I, he's a good villain. He's showing her like needles, you know. Uh huh. He's, he's doing kind he's of. He's doing a monologue about how like we the the internet and computers it's have so impersonal. Uh huh. And it, it's turned everything into a, anonymous electronic impulses. And then he also says though that the internet provides. Oh yeah. <laughs> the internet provides sex, commerce, politics, all this stuff. But but he leads it off by saying the internet provides birth, sex, commerce. Yeah. Huh. What? Birth, define birth. <laughs> <laughs> define birth. Because <laughs> all those other things, sure. But like, what? Birth. Oh, James almost fell over. Sorry. Great uh, New Day podcast moment. <laughs> oh, uh, God. <laughs> okay. But why does the, how does the internet provide birth? And he's like, he's saying that because like, well, it's only natural for it to provide death as well. Like, okay, yeah, but what are you, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so we're back to the kind of procedural bullshit. Thank Apparently, God. All the victims have like burnt computers. Um, I don't know. Uh, we meet. Is this Denise now? Finally? I think Denise has got to be in here by now. She's she's wearing glasses, so we know she's the computer nerd. But you she's... said that, but then in the very next scene, Terry's wearing glasses, and that threw me off. She's the health inspector nerd. Or not oh. health inspect health department. That's different. She's not really go. Is it different? She's not inspecting restaurants. The inspector has to come from the health department. I don't know. Where else would they come from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that's the other thing is the cops, uh, uh, Stephen Dorff and Jeffrey Combs, I don't think have ranks. They're never They're like cop. lieutenant or sergeant or detective even. They might not even be detective. Yeah, if I'm a writer, I don't know how to write well, police. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just hoping up. someone, does, like I'm hoping no one notices that I'm kind of sc- like working also, around that. Jeffrey Combs is playing a very unusual character for it him. It is kind of bizarre, yeah. It's like and he do, he's he's going all well, He's in always on it. really good. He's such stuff. a good character actor. It's just normally he is he's just a good actor. kind of like clean cut, I would say and stuff. He's at least at the very least he's usually intellectual. Yes, that. He's always like a smart guy. Yeah, whereas this, this character is kind of like a he's sleaze the bag cop. cop. That, and he's always eating donuts and he's gross. Yeah. It's really a bizarre. I didn't recognize him at first. No. It yeah. It's an interesting role for him to play. He does it well. Just yes. want to throw that out there. Not enough of him in the movie. He, yeah. he's really not around for too much of it. Yeah. So they give these like burnt hard drives or something to Denise, the computer nerd. And they're like, hey, fix these so we can look at what's on here. So she goes to fear.com.com. Ah, Denise. And um, so the... And like the lady like knows her name. She's like, Denise, come oh, and come find out. Want to come play. and find me. Come play. Walk around and find out. <laughs> I, apparently fear.com makes you hallucinate stuff you're afraid of as well and you die that's by right. your that's yeah. the another element on top of all the other stupid shit in this is the way you die it's your worst fear because the german guy's girlfriend was found in the tub and her worst fear she, yeah, she goes Terry i at one point is like i did some research and that girl's worst fear was drowning <laughs> how do you what? know like okay was there a live journal no one yeah what was the research that led you to discovering what her first <laughs> it's fine <laughs> 
<laughs> what was the German kid's worst fear? Uh, I forget. Bleeding to death? How he died. I forget how he died. He was in the station when he died. Yeah, I don't remember. And then the cop. Car crash. Or, uh, yeah, Terry's boss's worst fear, which she tells us after the fact to give us the much bigger impact of it. Apparently, he had been his worst fear was getting in a car accident. Yeah. Which we find out after he died from a car accident. Yeah. It's really good. And so I'm guessing Denise is afraid of cockroaches. Oh, yeah. She gets uh, mummy bugged. Yeah, they, they definitely borrowed the same, like, mummy particle generator where it's all <laughs> the bugs and they just changed it from scarabs. I think around here is when are the two main characters talk about like why why would people want to watch people get murdered on the internet or like why would someone do this and the reasoning that Terry gives is so funny because she says it so matter of factly and then Steven Dorf just agrees with it and then we move on. No, I think he says it and she nods. Sure, right? Okay, sure. Yeah. It's one of them being one of like, them says, oh, well, you know, people love watching those reality <laughs> reality disaster shows. And they both kind of nod like, yeah. That's it. What the fuck are they talking what about? What the fuck are they talking about? What's a reality disaster show? Were we watching people die in mass weather events? Did they think Twister TV? was real? Regularly. <laughs> like, it just makes it sound like there's reality shows of people dying in storms yeah is this, are we off the mark are we forgetting something like there's storm chaser shows sure I but they're not dying every episode that'd be crazy yeah there's no reality disaster shows like i i'm assuming they're trying to make a comment about like reality shows where like there's drama and people are like messy I but there's guess. not people dying on TV. it's not people TV. dying. That has no connection to watching someone die. I think they like, just want to get a jab in at the, the latest like I guess reality shows. I guess it's 2002 shows are kinda, reality. Yeah, it's like, oh, real world. Survivor's and, still huge. At this point, someone would have just gotten fucking medevac from Survivor because they fell in a fire. That There you go. That's what they're talking about. I mean, that's, that's the, the what I can disaster. think of. I just thought it was just the phrase of reality disaster shows. Uh, oh, yeah. And Denise died from the bugs, by the way, if you didn't know. Yeah, she fe- she got scared and she jumped out her window. Oh, yeah. Right when they were going to visit her, she like crashed right next to them onto the car. Yeah. And then Stephen Dorff felt bad for getting her involved. Yeah. Um, there's a scene now where they want to go find the co-author of that book that was on Udo Kier's body. And this scene, I don't even remember if anything significant comes of it. Because they show, they track they him to down bar. to this bar. He's in the back. He's in the back booth of a bar. It's like his booth, and it's like noon. Uh huh. <laughs> and he's like passed out, or so we think. Because when they get there, they're like, "Hey, are you Frank Bryant?" And then a woman crawls out from under. Yeah, she's the table. like wiping her mouth off. Sorry, and she she kind of just doop, 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 sneaks away out of the. So scene. apparently he was getting a, a daytime he's bar blow. Getting a noon blow job at the bar. But that so so you're like, oh, is this gonna be like? A suave womanizer guy, but like the rest of his conversation, he's uh, I'm a lonely drunk. Yeah. So who is that? Why was she blowing him in the bar? I mean, maybe paid her, but he is co-writing books about ghosts on the internet. I don't think he can afford that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think it's books. I think it was just the one. He's just book. <laughs> he's co-writing book about spirits on the internet. Yeah, and he so says he, he doesn't even believe it. Mumbles some shit about. Stuff in er, energy living in the wires of the internet. And this, I don't even remember what they talk about. And he's talking I'm about Udo Kier, who this co wrote point. this book with him. And Udo Kier's character, again, is Polly Dory, who is <laughs> said by all the other characters. But what does this guy call Polly him Dog. multiple times? <laughs> Polly Dolly came to believe he knew where that site existed. But then again, Polly Dolly was fucked up. He calls he him calls Polly him Dolly. Polly Dolly or Polly Golly. And they said, <laughs> and they... that's fine. Cut. We're moving on. It doesn't fucking matter. But what Polly Dolly got wrong well, is Polly that. Polly Dolly. <laughs> it's awesome. This movie's so good. I love it. And don't it. say it's because he's drunk and it was a no, character decision. No, because he's not slurring anything else. No. Like, he he's... He's, he's like a functional drunk. He's a drunk, functional you know? drunk, he's, yeah. He's daytime drunk. You he's can tell used to this. He's experienced. And he knew Polly Dolly. He wrote a <laughs> book with Polly Dolly. He knows that man. 
He's not just gonna say his name it's wrong. It's so fucking good. It's the actor not knowing and the director not bothering to correct him or maybe like Script hey, supervisor can we, okay, is asleep. Can we can we do this one more? The name the guy's name is Polidori, okay? And then they run it again and he says Polygolly and they're like, all right, we have it's to It's fine. Move on. We, yeah, we've We're got lunch. Out. We had a break for lunch. Like, I don't care anymore. Script supervisor ripping their hair out. They're like, we'll dub it in post. And then they forgot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The editor was too busy making these fucking montages of bullshit, spooky imagery that doesn't matter. Yeah, like, oh, a chest being ripped open and a bowling ball coming down the... Wait, this isn't the movie with the... What did we watch with the Skeksy? No, that was fucking All Hallows Eve. No, that Eve. was All Hallows Eve, which was our commentary, comment, commentary track, track for, for Patreon this month. If you want to watch that. I enjoyed that commentary track. It was fun. Was not expecting there to be aliens in that movie. I liked watching that movie more than this. Yes. All Hallows Eve better movie than this. Yeah. Throwing that out there. That was Damien Leone's pre-Terrifier movie. Yeah. And it shows how much money he had, but still better than Fear.com. It's like this. It's like the Steamboat Willie equivalent (laughs) of Art the Clown. Like before. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. Like he's not quite. Or like. He's like Oswald. Or like Mortimer Mouse, you know, before they were like, no, we should call him Mickey and have him be less fucking creepy looking. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely wish.com art, but it, yeah. Uh better than fear.com.com. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Frank Bryant does anything besides no, he just, words. Yeah, he just calls his friend Polly Dolly and <laughs> I don't know, rambles about Oh no, he might mention he's well, Ghosts in the Wires. Genie. I think he gives um Genie's oh, name, name maybe. Genie, sure. Genie's yes. the little girl ghost. So they go to her apartment. And they're, I don't know. Man, well, yeah, because she's not a little girl. Little girls can't get apartments. Yeah. She's the French lady but also wasn't there an old lady who's doing push-ups in the hallway in the montage that's genie is she old or is no she just... she's young well not okay. young who no like she like 20s and she's like barfing up blood and stuff oh yeah that's yeah it looks like she's doing knee push-ups yeah anytime there's someone who looks like a village of the damned resident that's genie genie yeah genie yeah genie Molly's licking her it asshole so loudly. And honestly, that's fine for this episode. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And so remember they walk into that bar and they get back and they're like, what is that noise? <laughs> <laughs> um, It's also right on here. This movie suddenly gets romantic. These characters are really into each Out other. Out of nowhere, of he's caressing her face. Yeah. They had a strictly professional relationship up to like, this point. And she's like, promise me you'll never go to fear.com.com. And he says, don't worry, babe, I won't. And he takes her home, immediately he t- drives back to where he was to get on a computer and go to fear.com. The right editing home. in this is is nonsensical. It's bad editing. He, okay, so he they're at his house, his apartment. <laughs> He like caresses her face and then it dissolves to him tucking her in at night in a bed, her bed, and they have too many clothes on to have had sex. So he's just tucking, he's her, just tucking in. her in and it looked to me because it's like a fade. It looks like he's tucking her in bed at this apartment that yeah. they're at. So, and it's too close of shots to know where they are, but he's tucking her in bed. Then he gets on an elevator and then he walks into his apartment. No, he walks into the apartment, the, like, genie apartment they were at. He goes back. Is that where he, they were kissing? Yes. Okay, okay. So, anyway. It's insane. They're in location A when he starts caressing her face. It dissolves to him tucking her into bed. At location and, B. But we don't know it's the but location B. But we don't B. know. Because all we it know, looks the fucking same. All we know is that he then takes an elevator, and then he walks back into location A, and you're like, wait, What? <laughs> Our friend who we were watching this with is a professional editor. <laughs> yeah. And he said, no, yeah, it's buck wild. It's so bad. Yes, it's not good. Anyways, of course he goes to fear.com.com. He goes right the fuck there. And he says, yes, I will find you. I will play your little website. He's typing in the hot box. That's what's called. It says hot box, hot box and it's like a little prompt and you and can type whatever you want She says you, you have 48 hours to find me. And okay. he immediately fucking finds her in the he elevator. He gets on an elevator and there she is. So we found her. This ghost doesn't play by the rules. But I guess it doesn't count if she made it easy. But then, so that doesn't, because like, okay, if we're playing hide and seek. Yeah. And you find me and uh-huh. I'm like, well, it doesn't count because I was making it easy. Yeah. I wasn't actually hiding. That's bullshit. That's, 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 that's basically that's what this ghost game. is doing. Ex- yes. I agree. 
And he goes, uh, he, she drops her glove and he basically is like, tips he's like, hat, m'lady. He's your, literally your like, uh, miss, I think you dropped this. He says miss. Miss your As glove. if she's not the ghost French lady from the website. Oh my God, there's so much more bullshit. Is there? Because I kind of We got, okay, so we got to go. We're uh, talking about, there. it's not just energy. If the will to survive is strong enough, it can... Make a website? No, it can live in the wires. <laughs> and make a website. And make a website. So now Terry's like, Mike, where'd you go? Oh, no, he must have gone to fear.com. Fuck. So now she... So she goes to fear.com. She, then she, of course, she presses the giant red do not press button. And uh, there's like 60 people watching, which is sad. And I love that the villain... Uh, I think she she goes to fear.com.com and then we also see the villain again. He's still monologuing. He quotes Stalin, which is that's how you know he's a bad guy, is when he's quoting Stalin. The statistic death, like one death's a tragedy. Yeah, millions is a statistic statistic or whatever. Yeah. So was it like how many people is he killing? Millions, dude? No, you're still in the tragedy range, all right. (coughs) I don't care unless you've like fucking got like a people mulcher out there. Yeah, it's not an efficient way no he's taking his fucking time she he, he doesn't even kill he's this an lady. artist you know yeah but d- there's no reason to get that quote going on i don't know yeah she okay terry finds the little girl's mom who is still alive through files question mark oh yeah through files this is where i think there's a scene missing or something or i just passed out for a second oh, I'm, you know i'm sorry if like you love this movie and you're like they didn't pay attention and they don't know what they're talking about you know what? Guilty. It was late. It was like two movie, in the morning. And this movie doesn't make any fucking sense if you're uh, kind of tired and you're watching it. But like, it's, it's, I don't think it's my fault. I, I don't think it's my fault. I think it's the movie's fault. And if it's your favorite movie, that's your fault. So I, I like plenty of movies that don't make fucking sense. So I'm sorry if we're just like missing stuff and you're exasperated that like we missed the scene where she went to the files and got the mom's address. Yeah. I like human centipede. So I can't. Talk shit about what anyone likes. Yeah. So don't worry. Don't worry about it. No hard feelings. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, she goes. If you're mad at us, don't worry. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all good. <laughs> Terry goes to a steel mill where apparently this little girl played a lot because there was no supervision at all. The mom was like, yeah, I just let her go to the steel mill and Whatever. fuck around. Yeah. Also, the mom has like a picture of Jeannie. Yeah. And she's, she's like moving. It's oh, like yeah. A the Harry picture Potter. moves like a Harry Potter picture. It's yeah. like when the Weasleys are in Egypt. <laughs> They're moving around. <laughs> It's not actually like that. It's not like one of those USB no, picture Terry's frames. No, because Terry's Terry's hallucinating. Um, she goes to the steel mill. There's an old lady with uh who's living in there who I think is also the genie, like the ghost, because she's like kind of like light blonde, like she's creepy. The old lady with the TV. I don't know. Is she also supposed to be? A no, ghost? I think it's just a homeless lady with a TV. <laughs> and then Terry's like, "What are you watching?" Nothing. There's nothing on the TV. She's watching soap operas in her head. <laughs> she's watching her head movies. And then she's like, she points to the water and is like, go down there. That's why I think she's a ghost. Oh. And at first I thought Terry was like, no, thank you. Terry's like, yes, ma'am. I will dive right into she this. She gets into this nasty Industrial water. runoff water. Yeah. And this there's a body. There's a spooky water. corpse down there. It's the face from the move, uh, the cover. Yeah. The corpse, where it's like this creepy, the mouth is all lopsided. And that's Genie? Yes. That's Genie's corpse. Okay. Yes. So it is it is like the changeling. A little or bit. Or like the ring. You got to like find the, the body. Because that's oh, why it's she's It's always saying, in a well. Yeah. There's water. And she, she's that's why she's been saying, come find me. You have yeah. 48 hours to find me. Which it. also, why give a 48 hour time live if you want them to find you? Maybe I don't give know. Is them, that how long she was tortured for? I maybe? think it was. Um, but maybe, you know, expand the parameters and maybe someone could fucking find you. Yeah. Perimeters. Parameters? Yeah. But she also doesn't really tell you what to do. So. Oh, yeah. She doesn't say come find me. I guess if you're giving that hint, it's like in an escape room. You give a hint and then it shortens the time. Yeah. You have. Yeah. Um, Go watch The Changeling instead of this. That would be a better <laughs> The Changeling choice. is a masterpiece. It's a classic for a reason. And if you haven't seen The Changeling, it's a fun one because once you do see it, it's one where you notice that, oh, there's references to it everywhere mm-hmm. in every movie. Uh, I wrote around here that fear.com.com has better accessibility than most websites because it has captions. <laughs> uh-huh. The French lady speaking, she has a little bit of an accent, but it's very clear to hear what she's saying. But <laughs> it still says. the font on the website is like this kind of weighted font. It looks almost like the dyslexia friendly font that some places are. So when where she's the bottom like, is like heavier than the top. 
So when she, it's an accessible <laughs> website, dude. She's saying like, do you want to play? It says, do you want to play there? Mm-hmm. The custom captioning, no auto captioning. And we were saying that. that I bet, you know, if you also, if, if you, um, are blind there probably is like audio description you know like okay it is like image of skin being scalpeled now it's hair being wrapped around uh wires ball oh, bounces towards camera woman, rolls into eyeball woman barfing blood onto carpet <laughs> <laughs> yeah she recorded the, that track herself yeah it's, yeah yeah it's great it's so th- she can target anyone you don't have an excuse yeah Oh, She's you're blind like, and you went to fear.com.com? Too bad. Yeah. Still, Look still at the game. me compared to this other, like the doctor. It, no captions there. Yeah. How can you platform such a problematic content <laughs> creator? He doesn't even subtitle his videos. <laughs> okay. Um, Jeffrey Combs gets killed. Oh, she wakes up in an elevator? Yeah. That whole time, apparently, she was tripping balls in an elevator. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Because she like got in an elevator. She goes the to the hospital to get and... Mike. Oh, yeah, Mike's still there. She busts Mike out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then um, they figure out that, oh, Jeannie wanted revenge. And that's why she made Fear. So I guess, I guess Fear.com is her own thing. Yeah, she made Fear.com.com. <sighs> I know that Jeffrey Combs gets killed. They find his body. Yeah. I don't remember how she lured him there. I think I, he got a phone call and was like, go check this thing out. And then they got there and he was show dead. Show you my boobs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, don't mind if I do. <laughs> uh, they find the doctor... Um, Why was Mike fucked up? What happened to him? Because he went to fear.com.com. Yeah, but no, I think something physical happened to him. He found the lady in the elevator and, I don't know, seen missing. He's in the hospital. I don't remember. No, 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 no. We got to let the people know what Dude, happened I promise here. the Wikipedia is not that detailed. No, no, no. We I got... promise Wikipedia doesn't know um, what happened. It's revealed that Mike's in the hospital. Yeah. It's not going to tell you. Like, no. there's no detailed plot summary of this movie anywhere. Okay. Damn. We're relying on our notes from two in the morning. It's not great. Uh, Final showdown with the doctor. There's a cool thing here. Here's my third thing that's cool. Mm-hmm. Is I wrote, and I, I, I saw a comment being like, I hate when they say I wrote, which is fair. We, we, you know, like, oh, why did I write this? And he's saying that a lot is like, I don't know, a repeating joke. But sometimes all I can do is say what I wrote because I can't remember why I wrote it. So wait, people don't like when we do a that. A single person left a comment one time. It's because sometimes I don't remember what the fuck I was talking about. It's okay, but I wrote. We fly through a syringe and his scalp gets peeled off. No, this is awesome. This scene fucking rules. This is cool. There yeah. is a weird CGI shot where we are suddenly inside of a syringe. And Do you remember one of the Final Destinations had something like this? I think the fourth one. It would yeah. have like they would have like visions and yeah, it would yeah, be like yeah, 3D yeah, yeah. shit. And this is similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, we're like in a syringe and then, then we like, pop out the needle. And then there's like his brains getting Peeled and it looks open? like Angelique in Hellraiser Bloodline, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, where, her, uh-huh. where the scalp is peeled down with like wires, and it looks cool. Yeah, and then Janine shows up, the ghost girl, and it looks like we're getting some mummy looking effects here. Is it Jeannie or Janine? I don't know. <laughs> Have we been saying both? <laughs> We've been real disrespectful, probably calling her the wrong name. Anyway, her ghost shows up, and it looks like the the mummy or something. Because it's like, uh, I don't know, not quite Capri Sun ghost, but it's it's a little funky. It looks like she's about to steal our souls right before the fast launch on the roller coaster. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have we been speaking with a French accent when we've been doing her? I'm just giving her, oh, I don't know, accent. Because she's, she's a German actress, so I don't know. No, it's, I think it's been kind of, you know. You, you cannot describe the accent you've been doing with any specific <laughs> Okay, good. I think that's accurate. It's been then. more Germanic than not. It's, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, she kills the doctor, Alistair Pratt. That's his name. <laughs> I didn't know yet. That yeah, that's name. the doctor's name is Alistair Pratt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Holly the, But Mike dies. <laughs> Mike, also, Mike also dies. Yeah, I think he finally, I think the adrenaline wore off and he's dead now. Yeah, he got killed. Yeah. Uh, by the doctor. Yes. By Pratt. Um, yeah. and Terry's real sad cause they were in love all of a sudden cut to this like closing scene where she's laying in bed with her feet 
up by the pillow. And James was like, why would you lay on your bed like, like no that? how tired you are, and you're going to get in bed the right and way. I said, counterpoint, sometimes I lay on the bed like that if Lucy is by the foot of the bed and I want to smush my face into her belly. And sure camera enough, pans the up, camera and she's the laying next to the cat. Yeah. You got me. I guess fourth good thing about this movie. Yeah. Accurate. Accurate portrayal. cat behavior. Yeah. Um, and then she gets a phone call and she picks up and no one's on the phone. It's, it's just static and she hangs up and goes back to snuggling the cat. So like, was it the ghost? Yeah. <laughs> Is there a sequel? No, there's not for this movie that grossed 19 million against its $40 million oh, budget. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Anyway, beer.com.com. I wonder what this movie's rentals were like compared to its box. Like, is Probably that better. stats? Because the cover is so scary. Mm -hmm. It's it's such an and it's easy. It's 2002. Yeah. It's blockbuster days. Yeah, yeah. That's were good times. That's such an easy pick if you're looking for like, let's rent what looks the scariest. I read many a comment of being like, my brother rented this and we always made fun of him because that was his pick for movie night. Yeah. This and um, 13 Ghosts had the scariest covers at the video store. God, would I watch 13 Ghosts a thousand times over this one? Yeah, and I, I got to agree. I, and that movie and has, is I don't love 13 50 Ghosts. 50% weak. You know, it's got 13 Ghosts. <laughs> and Matthew this Lillard. one's got one. <laughs> <laughs> so. You got a point there. Yeah. Well, that's the fear.com. Uh, uh -huh. It was fun to review something just kind of shitty. I hope it was fun for you because I know we couldn't really explain it well, but we did our best with the impression it left on us. I needed this. I, th you know, one for you guys, one for me. I needed something stupid this <laughs> week. And apologies for having to push this a week. Uh, we had our anniversary last weekend, and it was that plus the rumble was just a lot, and we didn't have any time to record. Mm -hmm. So. But that does mean you're getting two in a row. Yeah, We're next not week skipping is a week. Mm -hmm. You'll get another episode next week, and um, we'll see. I haven't, I haven't decided what we're doing for the next one. Gotta do that fast. What? Gotta do that fast. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yep. Go to Dead Me James on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. <laughs> I'm at Carebeck, C R E V E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, you can to There's some new merch, and it's really cute. Oh yeah, the Valentine's little like, Day skeleton stuff. hands mm -hmm. necklace is cute. That's nice. Two days after this podcast comes out is the Puppet Master Kill Count. Very nice. Fuck yeah. At long last. Seven years in the making. <laughs> uh, can't wait for that. And then make sure you mark your calendar for March 3rd for the Dead Meat Horror Awards. Yes. Oh, God. I still got to get my outfit. Yeah, you do because I got to rent my tux. Oh, and also They Talk is back. They Talk is Sundays. back. Ooh, I have an episode coming up. It might be the next one. I, is it? Well, you know what? The first one came out today yeah. that we're recording this, and it shows the covers. So the episodes are out. So yours is the Urban Legend one. Yeah. Urban Legend, they talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing Scream 2, returning uh, Ghostface like I did with Scream. So Yep. Look, I, and Urban Legend might be next. I forget. Cool. I'm happy with it. It's very funny. Yeah. yeah. So tune in for all that. We're giving okay. you so much fucking content. Monday morning live streams do that too. Yeah. Uh, and until all that, um, I'm James. And I'm Chelsea. That's Gressel. Hey. Thank you, Gressel. <laughs> Molly's down there. Down like in her butthole. Um, and th <laughs> this has been <laughs> the Demi Podcast.